Okay, today I got a Toro PowerMax 828LE. The 828 stands for an 8 horsepower Tecumseh engine, and the 28 stands for the 28 inch cutting path it has. The owner states that it does not run. It looks like it has been sitting somewhere for a while and not been used in many years. I'm going to first check the carburetor, and we're going to do that by dropping some fuel into the carburetor and giving it a quick pull start. Okay, first we're going to remove this cover so we can reveal and see the carburetor that's underneath this. We're going to pull this off this way. We're going to move a 516s, two Phillips heads, and a 516s over here by the engine oil. Okay, with the carburetor revealed, I'm going to shoot some fuel right into this intake, set the choke, and then see if it starts up. Okay, so that didn't work. So let's check to see if we have spark. To check the spark, I could either remove the spark plug and lean it up against here and see if it had spark, or I'm just gonna use my spark plug tester. Make sure this side goes to a good ground. Okay, let's see what happens here. Okay, so we know we have good spark. I'm gonna try this again, maybe with a little bit more fuel. Okay, now that we know we have good spark, I'm gonna put a little bit more fuel in the intake and see if it starts up. Since that didn't work, I'm going to pull the spark plug up, make sure that we have spark at the spark plug, and also check the condition of it. Doesn't look terrible, and it looks like there's a gap. Now we just want to make sure that this spark plug actually makes spark. Yes, it does. Now I know I have fuel because I'm providing it. I know I have spark. I'm going to put my finger over this spark plug hole and see if I have compression. If I have good compression, my thumb should pop off every time the engine spins over which it does. So I'm going to shoot a little fuel down in here, put the spark plug back in, and give it a shot. All right, fuel is directly in the cylinder. Spark plug is back in. Plug is connected to the cap. There we go. Okay, we now know the engine runs, we have spark. Let's try and feed fuel through the carburetor. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, we know we have a good running engine. The issue is with the fuel delivery system or the carburetor. I like to switch out the carburetor to a fully adjustable carburetor. I'll show you more about that when I replace it. Let's start by taking this one off. First, I like to start by removing everything that needs to be swapped over to the new carburetor. It's going to be this choke assembly here and this bracket, which holds that big shroud on. So two Phillips. And these, I believe, are quarter inch. While I'm here, I also want to inspect this primer line, see if there's any cracking or if it's brittle. Replace it now because it's much easier. This connects all the way up into this bulb. So when I push this, it shoots air into this carburetor bowl, which shoots fuel up and into the intake. This is used for cold starts. This one still seems flexible. No cracks I'm noticing. So I'm just probably going to cut the tip off of it and use it. All right, so now I have two mounting bolts here and one in the back. I also want to take note to this linkage right up here, the location that it's in, so that I get it right on the new one and put it in the same spot. So this is a 716s and there's a Phillips head here. You can also remove the whole entire intake with the carburetor if that's easier for you. Because my angle is so tight to get this back bolt here, I'm going to take off this manifold. These are a T30. Here's that linkage I was talking about, that throttle linkage. You want to make sure you get this arm back in that same hole on the new carburetor. We also have the disconnect fuel line, and then this thing should be able to remove from the machine. Okay, let's bring this over to the bench. Then we'll disconnect the manifold from the carburetor. And we'll go over the new one as well. Okay, just two bolts. The new carburetor comes with a gasket, so we're going to replace that. And there's really nothing else that we need off of here. So here's our new one from Amazon. Our new replacement gasket. Now, I know some people are going to say, why don't you just clean this? You've cleaned all the other carburetors. As soon as I open this one up, I've had a lot of issues with the gasket no longer sealing. There's a rubber needle valve seat that people say should be replaced. I don't want to get involved with all those parts. It's just cheaper to replace it. Also, sometimes I've cleaned them out and I still get surging in the engine where this one it being adjustable, I can adjust this main jet here. And I can also adjust the low speed jet. 
this allows me to fine tune the engine and how it's running. All right, so let's take this one and let's get it mounted to the manifold. We'll start by taking a razor blade. That was easy enough. Just going to clean up the surface. Running the razor blade backwards. Making sure it's a smooth finish. Take our new gasket. Okay, it's ready to go back on. Again, while we have the carburetor off, we also want to, again, make sure that we inspect the condition of our primer line. Just going to cut a little bit off. Also, we want to inspect the condition of our fuel hose. It's good enough to leave it. Okay, we're gonna start by attaching our linkage. Okay, we're gonna start by attaching our linkage. And our fuel line. Again, make sure our gasket is good. We want a good seal. Okay, let's put our brackets back on. This bracket goes with the opening facing down. Now our choke assembly. Don't forget our primary line. I like to also test this. Put my finger over here, push the bulb. You should feel a little pressure. Everything's back together. We have our fuel on. We're checking for leaks. Nothing's dripping. We're going to push our primer, see if we have fuel shooting in the intake. We do. Put the choke on and start it up. <laughs> All right, great. I'm going to bring it outside. We're going to tune it up a little bit, let it warm up, then give it a final tune. Okay, now that we have the engine warmed up, we're going to start it back up again, and we're going to adjust, make adjustments as needed. What we want is a nice smooth engine RPM. If it hesitates or it stumbles or surges, we're going to either lean or rich in the mixture. So screwing it clockwise will lean out the mixture, screwing the main jet, which is the one on the bottom, out will rich in the mixture.
okay, now the engine's running well, nice and smooth RPM. At full throttle, I adjusted the main jet, which is the one on the bottom. I went a little lean and then a little rich to see how the engine responded. Once that's set, great. I fluctuated the RPM, went down to idle, and I didn't really have to adjust that much. I tried a little bit one way, a little bit the other way, but turned out I just stayed with the factory setting. And that's it. It's just about how the engine, you got to use your ear and listen how the engine is running. I'm going to button back up and send it back out. I'm going to go over a couple other things off camera and then return it back to the customer. Thanks guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Comment if you have a question. Thank you very much, guys.